Hello everyone, welcome to day number three of the Feeding Grand Prix 2022 in Belgrade, Serbia. In this round, we will feature the game between Richard Report and Vidi Gujarati. Report scored an important victory over Vidit. And with this victory, he ties Vidit for the lead. All right, without further ado, let's take a look at the game. Report was white, he went for d4. We did one, Vidit went for knight f6, we have c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4. This is quite interesting because last night's win by Vidit was also a Nims of India. But he was playing the white side against Vladimir Fidesiv. Report went for e3, castles, bishop into d3, d5, takes in d5, e takes d5, a3, bishop e6, queen c2, a6, knight g e2. Rook into e8, castles, b6, bishop goes to b7, the knight goes to d7, everything normal, b4 not allowing c5, so knight bd7, knight into f4, okay, interesting choice, the knight on c3 and f4 is attacking d5, now black can capture the knight, yes, and we have a double pawn, but then again, white has two bishops in an open position. If let's say you put your bishop on b7 here, just a simple bishop e3, a normal developing move, you cannot move the knight to g4 because this bishop takes h7, and if you, let's say you play h6 or, or knight f8, for example, protecting h7, the knight goes back to e2. If you go knight to g4, the bishop will just move back to d2, this knight moves to g3, right? And white has a better position with rook a e1, right? Okay, so bishop into b7, rook b1. Interesting. Again, not allowing c5, because with c5 this takes. You have an x-ray on the b7 bishop. Knight into f8, f3. Taking away that important e4 square. Right. Controlling e4. Knight g6, knight f e2. Queen e7, knight g3. The maneuver of the knight from e2 to f4, back to e2, now to g3. Yeah. Queen to d7, knight f5. The knight, bishop f8, king h1, prophylaxis. Moving out of the danger zone. Because White's plan here is to push e4 at the right moment. So he doesn't want any checks on the dark square. Here. Knight goes to e7, knight g3 back. Knight e2 to f4, back to e2, to g3, to f5, and back to g3. Well, the traveler, rook d8, knight c e2. Another knight, and finally e4, right? The timing of that central push. The knight on e2 protects the important d4 square or the pawn, and then you push, all right? Forward takes, opening up the f file, pressure on f7. Rook into e6, bishop e2, knight in g4, threatening the e3 square with a double attack on the queen and the rook. Queen e3 moving out of that danger. b5, bishop c2, rook into c6, knight f5. The knight once again, yes, how many times? This is the second time the knight went to f5. Forward, backward, forward, backward, yes, that was nice. Cat and mouse play. Rook into e8. Knight e g3. White continues to improve on his pieces. 
species now on optimal squares. The knight on g3 protects f5, it reinforces the f5 square. The knight protects d4 and also the bishop. a5, bishop into d3, threatening b5. Hook into e6, takes the pawn in a5. We have an, we have an outside pass pawn. The bishop's role is attacking b5, plus the help of the queen. And now, forcing black to play c6. This is just a very bad bishop on b7. It's a big fat pawn on b7. Black's pieces are not coordinated, while white, except for the rook on b1. Knight, rook, the bishop, queen, even the pawn in a5. They, they are, okay, these are what we call role-playing, right? e5, okay. Bishop into e7, knight h5, the two knights threatening g7, putting pressure in the g7 square, the bishop has to go back. h3, driving away the knight, no other square, no other square except h6. But at the expense of the exchange, right? Mm -hmm. Double pawn. Look at that weakness on f6. Knight goes to f6. Takes, takes. Black is just so disorganized. This is a losing position. Uh, too many weaknesses. Bad bishop on b7. Double pawn. f7 weakness. White has a pass pawn. It's just a matter of time, by the way. Last trick for black is this move c5 and queen takes h3. But will it happen? Now, if let's say c5, white can just simply capture and b5, attacking the queen, because this queen protects the important h3 square. So even that last trick doesn't work. So bishop goes to g7, rook into f2, protecting g2, not allowing any counterplay with knight h4. It was again possible to play this rook b6 here, but uh, Rapport wants to keep an eye on f7 and also the g2 square. It's better to, to be safe than sorry once again. So rook to b8, bishop e4, c5 takes, c4, queen f3, still keeping an eye, just transferring the queen. Pressure on f7, rook takes b7, and then bishop c3. Here, black resign. All right, you, you, it's hard to find a move for, for black here. Let's say a knight f8, for example, there's a4. This is the main point of bishop c3. Because you cannot take the pawn on a4, this rook takes b7. The queen is on f3 to protect b7 square. Right? What to do, Yanni? If you put that knight on e6, the pawn will just push to a6, so rook to a7, rook takes b5, or even pawn takes b5, right? Connected pawns. Yeah. Alright, it was a clinical win by report over Vidit, and it's also very important. His first win in group C. He drew his first two games, but he's now tied for the lead with Vidit, two out of three. And if we talk about direct encounter, winning over Vidit is a big thing, right? And in the first leg, also Rapport qualified for the semifinals. So he has seven points, seven Grand Prix points at the moment. So he has this outside chance to get one of those two slots for the candidates. All right, that's about it. Okay, that's game number three, or round number three of the Fiji Grand Prix in Serbia. We will continue our coverage for round number four tomorrow. Thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for supporting our channel, Charles Max Chess and Charles Max Entertainment on Facebook and on YouTube. This is Coach Oliver. 
I'm signing off. Bye-bye.